So a couple of years ago, a friend of mine is in Bangkok, Thailand for a business conference. And this is a larger guy. He's about six foot three, very muscular. And he's thinking, you know what? It's broad day. I'm just going to go enjoy, check things out. He's wearing a t-shirt, nice trousers, nice shoes, going around, walking around, checking things out. And he gets spotted, pulled and pushed into an alley. Three people tried to rob him. Now, what happened next sounds like it comes out of a movie, but he got very lucky. He ended up getting into a fight. Two of these guys he put in the hospital. The other guy ran off and he was out of the country within 48 hours. He was freaked out and to this day still has some trauma because the injuries and what he did to these other people is something he never wants to talk about. Now, here on this channel, we talk a lot about style, about commanding respect, about looking your best and actually standing out. In today's video, it's going to be different. We're going to talk about being a gray man, a man that's able to move through a crowd and not be seen. And with that being said, gents, let's get into this. Rule number one to being a gray man, no flashy colors, no reds, no orange, no bright yellows. Shut up, shut up. Guys, keep it simple. They call them the gray man for a reason. You don't have to wear gray, but I love gray because there are what, like 50 shades? Seriously though, light gray, dark gray, charcoal gray, just yeah, many variations of gray and gray is actually a great color if you want a simple, clean wardrobe that's easy to match. I'm wearing a light gray shirt, I've got dark gray trousers. I could throw a gray sports jacket, even a blue sports jacket on this and it actually would keep a relatively dark, clean silhouette. Now, you don't want to wear in general light colors and we're talking white because it is a bit bright, attention grabbing. It's always not as common as you would think, although in certain environments, and we'll talk about that where white would actually be perfectly fine. But in general, you want to make sure that you're looking at your surroundings and you're matching that. In general, a lot of men around the world keep it very simple with dark colors. Oh, and if you conceal carry, dark colors are your friend because you're less likely to print. Printing is whenever basically people can see that you're carrying a weapon because an outline is formed through the clothing. Using dark colors, you're less likely to print. Also, carrying a smaller weapon, you're less likely to print. Right here, I've got a Sig Sauer, what is this, P365 SAS, great, simple, clean little weapon. I've got a Springfield Armory Hellcat. Either of these weapons, very unlikely to print if you carry them correctly, but if you're carrying a full size, you know, let's say Beretta, 92 FS, I used to carry this in the Marine Corps. I don't daily carry this, but if you choose to carry a full size weapon, you want to make sure you're wearing darker clothing, that you're wearing layered clothing so you're less likely to basically give away the fact that you are armed. Now, what about clothing styles? Should you always just wear a hoodie? A lot of people talk about that is the ultimate gray man style. I'm going to say no, because if you're surrounded by people that are wearing suits, you do not want to be wearing a hoodie because guess what? You are going to stand out. Now, you don't want to wear a suit if you're around people that are wearing hoodies. So, this is key. You've got to pay attention to your environment. You got to look at what everyone is wearing around you. And I do advise that you layer. This is one of the smarter things to do if you really want to be a gray man. Not only does it give you the ability to strip off those layers, if for some reason you've been marked, you want to get away from somebody, you want to actually change up your look, but actually by, you know, layering right here, you give you just, again, more options again when it comes to printing and other things like that. So, yeah, paying attention attention to the style of clothing, you can actually dress up. You're going to be in New York City, you're going to be in downtown Chicago, over in Los Angeles. You can actually wear clothing if you're going to an event, there's going to be two to three hundred people there, most of them wearing suits in New York City. Guess what? You can wear that navy suit. Now, you're not going to go over the top of the pocket square, you're going to keep the shoes muted, but really white shirt, blue suit, I mean this describes probably half the professionals in New York City. You go to Chicago that gray sports jacket. Again, not going to draw a whole lot of attention. A simple white polo shirt, maybe a dress shirt, jeans, maybe brown shoes, keeping it really simple. Something that we would see tons of guys dressed like this. Avoid the flash. Avoid bringing in any crazy colors, a pocket square or a tie that stands out too much. Yeah, avoid that. Look to blend in. That's the key. Now, gents, if you're enjoying today's video, do me a favor and smash that like button. Seriously, I'm not sure if you guys are going to like this one. So, I go in and I look at, hey, how many likes is this getting? Is this getting engagement? And is anyone else excited to see that new movie with Ryan Gosling? Let me know in the comments below. I love a good action flick. Now, this third rule is one a lot of people don't think about, but avoid showing too much skin. If you can, wear a long sleeve shirt. If you've got tattoos, this is really important because you can quickly be profiled, be remembered as that person with 
particular tattoos, but also skin and showing too much of it. It really just, it, it's sex appeal. It's something that people remember even on guys. It's not just women. So, wearing those short sleeve shirts, I'd go with a long sleeve shirt. Again, the guy with the white shirt, they're not, they don't even remember what color your skin was, especially if you know you're somewhat brown, maybe you're a little bit whiter colored. If you're black, again, it doesn't, they get less skin that they can see. Therefore, they're less likely to be able to remember you. Rule number four is to watch your movements, watch your mannerisms. So, if you're looking at a school of fish, I mean, it looks like they're all together, they move in unison. What happens though is usually whenever a predator is going after them, there's a few that they can get out of the pack and those are the ones that they strike that they eat. You do not want to be that person. If you're looking for the gray man, it's not just about your clothing and blending in, it's about matching their movement. So, if the whole crowd is going in one direction, you go in that direction. If the crowd is moving quickly, you move quickly. If they slow down, you slow down. Now, there are tactics that are probably more advanced and beyond this video in which you can move through a crowd, but in general, you don't want to give off excited, nervous movements. If everyone is looking one direction, you don't want to be that one guy that's looking the other direction. Now, you can look behind you, but you need to make it look natural. The key here is to pay attention to your surroundings and blend in, do things that are similar because if people see you have a nervous movement, they see you going in the opposite direction, they see you doing something that makes them nervous, all of a sudden you're going to draw unwanted attention to yourself. Rule number five, avoid chit chat, avoid conversation. If you don't want to be seen, don't talk to people. I mean, we've all had that happen at a grocery store. You see someone you recognize you want to talk to, what do you do? You move towards them, you open up, you try to make eye contact. On the opposite side, if you don't want to talk to someone you're trying to avoid, you look the other way. You move naturally the other way. It's like, yeah, I, I didn't see you there. That's what you're looking to do. And you want to avoid getting close enough for people to be able to ask you directions, to be able to start engaging with you. And yeah, do not engage with others again if you want to be a gray man. All right, Jen, so now let's talk about gray man gear. Specifically, let's start off with the shoes. Your shoes have to be gray. No, just kidding. They don't have to be. Again, look at the situation. We talked about that as one of the rules. These would probably stand out because of the white, the contrast here. I would probably go straight up black. But what I did want to talk about is any shoe that you choose. As a gray man, you want to make sure you can run in them. And this is something that you don't know what's going to happen, what the situation is, but you want to make sure it is a laced shoe. Any type of shoe that can slip on can easily slip off. You want something that's going to stay on your feet and has traction. Personally, I think boots are one of the best choices out there. There are dress boots, there are casual boots, but boots in general are the, yeah, if you had to bug out and you had one pair of shoes, whatever is on your feet, you would not go wrong by having a pair of boots that have a rubber sole and you can quickly move in. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but running shoes, maybe not in this color, maybe going with a straight up black, something again that's not going to draw attention, but that you can move quickly, laces up and gives you traction to move. But what if you have to wear dress shoes? You need something practical. This is day to day going into the office. I still think you can have a little bit of style right here, maybe with brogues. It's something very few people notice. But again, give yourself some traction right here. Yes, we've got the leather sole, but we've also got a little bit of rubber built in here. We've got a rubber heel. That right there is going to give you the ability to quickly turn and move. Now, when it comes with pants, again, it depends on the situation, but I would look at performance pants. What I love about these is they're comfortable, they're breathable, and you can move quickly in them. You can dress them up, you can dress them down. And uh, going with gray, again, Notice the, the theme here. But what's great about gray is it matches pretty much anything. Jeans, though, are probably the easiest one that most people can default to. A dark pair of denim jeans that fit you, maybe a little bit faded. This right here is practical, inexpensive, and probably half the guys you run into, more than half, 75% of the guys you're going to run into in many situations are wearing jeans. So, again, if someone tried to describe you, he was wearing blue jeans. Okay, that describes half the planet, right? Next up, we've got shirts. And this one here is just about avoiding mistakes. Anything that has a big logo on it, has a big saying, a t-shirt that just screams for attention, that's what you want to avoid. Go with a simple black tee, a simple white tee, a v-neck black tee. 
If you're gonna wear a dress shirt, go with a white or a light blue. Anything else is more memorable. Those right there, the white in general is gonna be like 70% of the guys. The other 20 to 25% light blue. Occasionally, you've got guys that bring in, you know, like a bold pink or, yeah, avoid that. Go with that simple white. And that's when the white dress shirt and wearing the color white isn't a bad thing. If you're in the tropics, you know, again, look to keep it, look around. I do wear simple polos. They dress me up because here's where you do want to have a bit of credibility. You don't want to look homeless. You don't want to look like some tactical ranger coming out of a movie because if you get stopped by the police, if you're stopped or questioned by certain people, by the government, you want to make sure, hey, that you look the part, you're clean, you're well put together. You just don't look like a special, you look like a normal guy, maybe a little bit dressed, a little bit better, you know, but uh, yeah, that's what you want to avoid. Next up, let's talk about the sweatshirt. And I can see why this is the darling of the gray man community because it has so many versatile uses. You can cover your head, cover your face. It comes in so many colors. It's relatively common out there. And I do think that it has a place in a gray man's wardrobe. Again, don't go with anything with a big logo. Grays, blacks, dark blues. That's where it's at. You want to make sure it's not too large, but it is large enough that you can layer. And this is the advantage of sweatshirts a lot of people don't talk about is that you could have a different colored shirt on. Maybe you've got a dark blue, the actual color of the, you know, it's a light gray, the sweatshirt. So you can slip that off if somebody describes, hey, I saw some guy going out there with a light gray sweatshirt with blue jeans. All of a sudden you have a black shirt with blue jeans. It's a very different description. That's the advantage of the sweatshirt that's not really talked about is the ability to layer and to be able to change things up in the case you are marked. Next up, we've got jackets. When I say jackets, I'm not talking just suit jackets, sports jackets, although again, in the right situation, those can be totally anonymous. You can really blend in, but maybe a dark black leather jacket, simple jacket right there. That is an option. You could also look at a blouse and jacket. James Bond wore these and I think it was Quantum of Solace looked really good. I like it as well because it's dark. That jacket right there, again, it's classic. It'll make you look good. It's stylish, but it doesn't really draw attention. And let's talk about watches. Wearing an expensive watch can make you a target. You're wearing a Rolex. You're wearing a Patek. You, this is a watch that a lot of people, they do know about this and they know how much money's on your wrist and it sets you up, yeah, to possibly be robbed. So whenever I'm traveling, I wear still nice watches, but I wear relatively inexpensive ones. If I were to lose and I don't feel make me even close to being a target, especially this Timex here by Todd Snyder. I've got a couple of these and, uh, you know, they're 100, 150 buck watches. They're just great. They tell time, they look good, and it gives me an excuse to wear uh, a lot of the other watches in my collection. And when it comes to fragrance, keep it on the down low. It pains me to say this, but possibly don't wear anything. Truly, if you want to be a gray man, people can smell. You don't want to be yeah, having that intoxicating scent that leads people right to you, right? Now, gents, if you enjoyed today's video, you are going to love this one. Seriously, it's a great video. Click on it. Go check it out. Seriously, you know you want to watch. Click. Go, go, go check this out. Be a gray man. Stealth. Click. Keep going on YouTube. Yes, no one's going to notice that you're watching 25 videos from Armor Us. Well, I will. I'll see it in the analytics. <laughs>